In this case study, we examine how teachers can use online lectures to support active learning and improve student understanding of class content. Dr. Daniel Southam, an Associate Professor Mauro Mossarino of Curtin University, use a combination of clicker questioning and supporting online lectures in their first year pharmacy course to help engage and improve student learning. In this episode, we examine the benefits of this approach and offer some useful tips when using these strategies. So the course you're going to be looking at today is a first year pharmacy course. It's called Introduction to Pharmaceutical Chemistry. About 140 uh, are in this class. So the format is face-to-face, -face, uh, but with online support. The face-to-face -face class uses an active learning strategy. I don't give any didactic lectures. The whole reason for going to a different approach to teaching is born out of a dissatisfaction with the current passive learning strategy and with a desire to improve student understanding. I apply the this active learning strategies in both my major first year classes. In first semester it's the pharmacy group and in second semester they're the chemists, chemical engineers. I do it because I think it supports their learning and improves their learning. Um, I'm not here to make life easier for them, but I do want to make their learning better. We use a pedagogy called process-oriented guided inquiry learning. We use uh, a prompt such as clicker questioning. We record uh, some mini lectures using a, a screen capture software, which is used as a backup to the activity in class, just to get them working through the activity, engaging with the content, and hopefully learning something along the way. So the clicker itself, um, just involves uh, a multiple choice response. We use uh, turning point keypads. When the polling's opened and um, a little window comes up on the screen that shows them the number of responses. If I have a spread of answers um, with the clickers, I will get them to re-vote, discuss amongst themselves and try and convince their neighbours that their answer is right. And the clicker software will actually allow them to change their response. Because I don't give that transmission of information in the classroom, I have an underlying concern that other students might be missing out. Uh, either they've missed a concept or they've uh, interpreted it incorrectly. Uh, and so just as a feedback mechanism and to really close the loop for those students, we give them those mini lectures uh, online. It doesn't replace actually doing the activity or attending the lecture or doing the clicker questions. It's just as a support mechanism. So within our lecture notes section here, on uh, Blackboard, the clicker questions that they've just been given in the class go up as a PDF. And the, uh, this particular uh, section has lectures. So when we look at reactivity, there are two possible measures of whether a reaction will actually occur. The first is thermodynamics, and this tells us whether the process is spontaneous. I use a piece of desktop capture software called Echo360. It's linked directly into our lecture system. These are the ones that I've already prepared. And so when you actually record the um, process, it'll just take uh, a capture of the actual screen that you're seeing. Once that's done, you come up with a, a recording itself, which looks like uh, this. And so you can actually go through and, and just check. And then you just publish the recording, log into the uh, iLecture database, uploads it automatically. So uh, using the, the iLectures and, and the information from the clicker questions in class and giving it to them, uh, in that passive format online, that's, that's a powerful thing. The benefit is that I can have the confidence that the students have the information. I think the I lectures were actually really helpful. They are really clear and um, yeah, you can really understand them really well. I think it's good because if you haven't by any chance haven't attended the lecture, you can listen to it and get the idea instead of reading the notes, which is not effective as listening to the lectures. When I gave a question, a clicker question, and I had a spread of answers, and I asked the students to then, without telling them what the right answer was, discuss with your colleagues. I always get a better second vote without any explanation from me. So it's good to have the clicker question. We can see if we, we're going the right way in the activities. I think it's actually helpful that we can work in groups and talk to each other and see if we can come up with a better answer. They know how they're supposed to think. They recognise that they don't need to fully understand it before they start. The understanding will come by the time they get to the end. 
any time in a lecture um, somebody gives an example, that example can be turned around. So in a passive learning environment, you would talk them through how to approach that example and then show it. Within the process oriented guided inquiry learning, what happens is you actually flip it around, give them the example, and then get them to interrogate that, that example, that model, and arrive at the understanding themselves. What concepts do I really want them to cover in this class? And then that really does scaffold the presentation post-lecture, the mini-lecture online. During the lecture also, I'm, I'll make note of where I think they're struggling, what they might need, some further examples. I try then the week following to make sure that the iLectures are available. It shouldn't be a significant workload. Certainly, if you can try and at least frame the questions that you want to answer in the mini lectures specifically, it can cut down the number of student um, inquiries about the concept. The students didn't react very well at the beginning. They felt fairly uncomfortable and it, it did require a bit of explanation on the psychology of learning and how people learn because a lot of students have not, a lot of people haven't thought about how they actually learn things. The lecture theatre looks and feels very different to what they're used to. Um, they're given the opportunity to talk, they're encouraged to talk and to actually do something in the lecture and so for that class it might be something that they've never seen before. I find uh, not having the lect lecture, uh, real lecture um, challenging. Sometimes we just go straight to act activities and it's really hard to because we don't have any background. I think it has improved my results because I'm more active than like just looking at the teacher or listening to him or her. The understanding of the concepts are improved and they get it better uh, by working through these things. But it takes a little bit longer at the beginning because they're learning the process of working things out for themselves. And so by giving them that online support, you're giving them the confidence that the concept that they build up by themselves with minimum intervention from me is actually correct. Not only do they work it out for themselves, they develop confidence in their own ability to work something out. And I think the confidence is also an important as aspect.